Good morning and welcome to our Wednesday show, Jeux de Gallo on Inside News. Uh, I'm on my own today. Obviously, uh, Shahil is still busy writing his exams, but uh, I'm going to go through uh, last week's meeting. Obviously, my horse to follow the one barrier trial yesterday, and then obviously a couple of horses uh, in, in training. Uh, it is the President's Cup or the Coupe du Président, uh, as they say uh, in, in Mauritius, and that will be run on Saturday. It looks like it's going to be quite an exciting race. Let's talk about Saturday. Uh, Black Cat back. He was our selection, and he won quite easily. I was quite surprised that he started at 480 on the tote because I thought he'd be quite a hard horse to beat and uh, he proved that obviously uh, I thought he sort of lacked that fitness last time, that racing fitness last time and uh, also just the way that the race was run last time. Uh, it didn't really go down very well with me. Walter gave him a hard time. He went a little bit too quick. Uh, I'm not blaming the jockey at all. I just feel the fact that Walter had chased him most of the way. Uh, he was just doing too much and he had to stop and uh, well this week uh, everything went a lot better. He was still pulling a little bit out in front, uh, uh, Black Cat back. Never really settled. Especially around about that thousand meters when they came past that Tombe Melotic. He was really taking hold with him and he only really settled late, but he quickened on beautifully uh, up the straight. And obviously, he is a decent horse. And uh, uh, we said on Friday that, that, that Black Cat Back and Walter stood out, and uh, these two managed to run first and second. I would imagine uh, that both these horses would probably be aimed at the Gold Cup. Uh, it's just a theory of mine, uh, not an exact science, but I, I would imagine, especially Black Cat back would probably be aimed at the um Gold Cup, remember, he has run third, half a length behind White River uh, at, wi at level to, uh, level weights over the 1600. That was obviously the Barbie Cup, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, if uh, Black Cat Back takes his uh, chances in the Gold Cup. Third was uh, Shahil's uh, value bet. I fancied him too. In fact, uh, uh, I had managed to tip the straight line trifecta there, Black Cat Back, Wall Tag, and uh, obviously Table Bay, and for 30 rupees, you could have picked up 850 rupees. Uh, I managed to catch that trifecta. I was quite proud of myself. Uh, first, second and third and uh, that was quite a nice uh, little result there. Unfortunately uh, the quartet, I didn't have Wool I put in baritone and uh, that paid quite nicely as well. I think it paid well over six, seven thousand rupees. So uh, Unfortunately, um, my, the two stable companions ran uh, fourth and fifth but I wish it was the other way around. I would have caught that quartet. Right, let's talk about Mutsi and uh, once again we spoke about him on Friday and he's really done well. He's pulled off the hat-trick and this was probably the easiest win of the three. Uh, he was stone lost. Okay, yes, they were going flat out, which obviously suited him. But from stone lost to first in a matter of strides, and he went away and he won a very, very good ride. Uh, uh, once again, another good ride from, from Manuel Nunes uh, on top of uh, uh, Mutsi. So the, these two have struck up a good relationship recently. But anyway, the way that Mutsi won, uh, you'd think that he's probably got another one or two in the tank, uh, uh, Mutsi. He's really come well. Uh, he's a seven-year-old now, but uh, you'd think that he was a three all the way that he's running and then uh, two from two uh, the jazz singer I have to say he was very, very, very lucky in my opinion. I don't think that Northern Spice should have got beat. It was just a draw that I'm not blaming the jockey at all. He did everything he could. Uh, it was just a draw that beat him. He came in the straight, stone last. He got beaten neck. He's definitely a horse that we can uh, uh, worth, uh, we can follow in the future. He looks like he's going to be a top horse, this uh, Northern Spy from the Patrick Mervyn stable. Very unlucky uh, with that draw. And in my opinion, had he drawn a little bit better, he probably would have beaten the jazz singer. Eric Nguane, uh, there's another Another good ride on top of uh, From the Ashes and um yeah, I thought he rode him. Uh, well, it's two very good rides, uh, Eric Nguani. Obviously, he looks like he's a decent jockey. My horse, uh, ticket to hold him. I wanted my horses to follow. Oh, there was a cracking run from him. He was absolutely nowhere with 50 meters to go. He flew up and just got uh, denied a short head. So, ticket holder, a horse that I have been following, unfortunately just failed. And uh, I think he could make amends next time. He's got some good uh, form back in South Africa, and he will win before the end of the season. Well done to that one uh, punter that picked up the pick eight uh, he picked up nine, almost nine million in with that one ticket uh, after many many carryovers many weeks of carryovers and uh, well done to him he picked up nine million rupees and just proves to you that there is money to be made in this game probably just need a little bit of luck but uh, I've, I've just been so unlucky with the pick eight one leg two legs out every single week and uh, this week it was captain gone wild diego dick of I've, I've made one sort of um, 
Well, I've seen one thing about him. He's getting a little bit slow away on a couple of horses. And as you know, Mauritius, you can't be slow away. You have to jump on terms. Captain gone well, captain of the sea, both of them a little bit slow away. And he's going to have to brush up on, on getting these horses out the gates quicker because, as, you, as we all know, Mauritius, you've got to ping those gates. You've got to get into your position early. You can't afford to be slow away uh, here in Mauritius. And, and uh, he's going to have to learn very quickly to get these horses out the gate a little bit quicker. Right, uh, that was Saturday. Let's talk about my horse to follow. And it's going to be all about the bass from the Hurchin stable. Manuel Nunes rode him, uh, cracking run from this horse first time out. I think he only got beat a length, just over a length, and uh, he was badly drawn. And it was obvious that Manuel Nunes was was not interested in placing him from that bad draw. He dropped him in straight away, and uh, which is, I suppose, I mean, he had his right to do that. It is his first run. Dropped him in, uh, got sort of like near the back, but he did make me travel beautifully throughout the races. Was he? He travelled sort of like halfway back, always travelling well. Uh, the, everything was going fine for him until the 400, when uh, Zodiac Jack and I think it was Vasco C Tractor. He got sort of sandwiched between the two of them. Had to take a check, and that cost him. And um, he came back into the straight. He really ran on well towards the end, and uh, he finished the cracking. Well, he finished the race beautifully. Like I said, only got beat 1.3 lengths. He, remember, he has shown some some very good promise in his barrier trials this horse, and I think there was a little bit of uh, betting support from him. Um, he ran in a benchmark 46. He's rated 41, so he qualifies for a benchmark 41. So it'll be interesting to see this horse come out next time. I think he's going to take quite a lot of beating if he hasn't, if he doesn't suffer from that second run syndrome that is. But uh, remember, like I said, he's rated 41. Um, I reckon there's a win in this horse very soon. There's something about this horse that has really caught my eye. I like the way he strides out. I like the way he travels in a race. And uh, I thought he was a little bit unlucky on 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 Saturday. I don't think he would have won it, but he would have gone very very close to winning. And uh, he's definitely going to be a horse that we, I'm going to keep an eye on in the future. Go back and have a look at the race and uh, you'll see. I think he was pretty unlucky. Right, yesterday we did have one barrier trial and um, it was four horses. We have Star of Zeus again. Uh, he's had a couple of barrier trials now ever since he got scratched. And then uh, two new t newcomers from the Patrick Mervyn stable, one newcomer from uh, the Hurchon stable. Let's talk about Star of Zeus. Uh, like I said last week, he, he jumped with the pacifiers, stood beautifully, loaded nicely, jumped well, galloped well. So looks like uh, Star of Zeus is over his uh, problem. Remember, he got scratched last time. And uh, maybe now with the pacifiers, it's calmed him down a little bit. And uh, he does look like he's a lot better. He is nominated on Saturday. So let's see how he goes as far as the starting stalls are concerned. But if all goes well, uh, he should run a good race. So he's had two nice gallops now. And uh, he looks like he's a little bit better than, than his rating of 0.25. Right, Rock Spirit from the Patrick, sorry, not Rock Spirit, River Thames ran second. He had the blue jacket, Patrick Mervyn. He was owned by Paul Fuvo, or the, the Fook Young stable back in South Africa. He managed to win one race and then they brought him over here. I tell you, this horse has got some cracking form. He ran second to that horse, Knights Templar. Now, Knights Templar is a crack. Uh, young horse from the Justin Nath stable, Justin Snaith stable, I beg your pardon, and uh, he looks like he's a very, very nice horse, uh, uh, Knights Templar. This horse ran second to him. He's very lowly rated. Uh, remember when he won, he beat Cash Call. Cash Call ran third. We've seen Cash Call's done pretty well, this horse, and uh, this one's got some solid form. I think he's going to be a big, big asset to the Patrick Mervyn stable. Maybe not this year, but we'll probably see a lot more of this horse next year. Rock Spirit, uh, he's a one-time winner from Cape Town. Uh, he's best this form was over a thousand. In fact, he won over a thousand. I can tell you that the worrying factor is that it took him nine or ten starts to win. And to be honest with you, he never beat much. The form isn't that strong uh, from the horses that he's raced against. I pre definitely prefer River Thames. I think he's going to be a nice horse uh, uh, between the two uh, newcomers of Patrick Move. And then Potluck, um, Yellow Jacket, 15 runs, yet to win. A couple of average places. Um, Hasn't got the greatest form to talk about, but we'll see how he goes as well. I'd like to see him run before we make any sort of judgment about pot luck, but keep an eye on River Thames. I think he's a top uh, little horse in the making this. I think he's going to be a nice horse next year, uh, River Thames. Right, and then uh, Sandwork, like I said, it is the uh, uh, President's Cup this week. It uh, looks like it's going to be quite an exciting race. We're going to speak about some of the horses. First of all, let's talk about White River. Uh, his campaign to win all four classics is on track. He moves beautifully under Yashim in Mamdi yesterday, and he's lost none of his spark. Uh, the Duke of York Cup is in less than a month now, and uh, he looks like he's well on his way to pull it off. Uh, I, I've made no secrets what I, what I feel about the source, my admiration for the source. 
I made him a tough, tough horse to beat in the Maiden Cup. He won it well, and uh, I honestly believe that this horse can pull off all four classics in one season. He's a top, top horse, uh, White River. There's no doubt about that. Right, uh, perplexing. He's in nominating the feature. And I have to say, it's quite a disappointing uh, nominations for the feature race. Only five horses nominated, and perplexing is one of them. Uh, I have to say. Uh, the, the big question here is, is obviously the weight. He's got 54 kilograms on his back. Uh, remember that uh, Oliver Plasse was carded to ride uh, Al Hamd at 55, but he, he declared a kilo over, so that's 56. But knowing jockeys, knowing I was a jockey myself, obviously Oliver Plasse knew that uh, at a certain date that Perplexing was going to come into this race with 54 kilos. So he's obviously made all the necessary um, uh, plans to, to get down as low as he can. Maybe maybe might not get to 54, but to lose a kilo and a half in a, in a week uh, is, is not going to be too much of a problem. So I would imagine maybe plus half. He's probably going to push to ride the, the 54 kilos on the day. But uh, it's, I reckon he's obviously knew what weight that this horse is going to be coming into the race. And I'm sure that he's made all his uh, provisions to ride him as light as he can. Uh, remember, I remember this horse uh, perplexing. I've always liked him. Uh, I've always said he's reminded me of the legendary Diamond Light. Remember Diamond Light came out and won a group two. If I'm not mistaken, it was this race and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if perplexing could pick up a, a, a race like this, a group two race. Right, his biggest danger is obviously going to come from the Ricky Mango trained Al Shiba. And uh, this is obviously, like I said, he's obviously uh, perplexing his biggest danger. Remember, he did run second to perplexing, but he was very unlucky that day. He couldn't get out on the, uh, he was stuck on the fence. I thought he was pretty lucky to get beat by perplexing on that particular day. He then came out and ran an excellent second in the maiden, 2,400 meters, level weights 58 with some of the best, well, uh, well, the best, White River. And uh, so you would want to probably ask yourself, is this a revenge match with perplexing? Is it a confirmation race? Uh, about the Maiden Cup. That's going to be left to be seen on Saturday. Uh, once again, the question mark is, who's going to ride him? Uh, Daryl Harden is suspended. He's got, I think he's carded to run with 55 kilograms. So it'll be interesting to see who's going to ride him. I see Akash Balu did work him. Whether or not he's going to ride him or they're going to opt for a foreign jockey. There is only five runners, so there'll be quite a lot of uh, uh, foreign jockeys available. Uh, so Ricky Mangard will probably have a choice. He's probably going to have to run around and, and, and speak to a couple of jockeys. But Al Shiba, not a easy horse to ride, has to settle, has to probably get the first run on, on perplexing as well, but uh, it'll be, it remains to be seen who's going to be riding Al Sheba come Saturday afternoon, or we'll know on Thursday obviously when the final field comes out. Right, let's move over to one of Gilbert Reset's horses, uh, Senior's guest, and uh, could he have been a victim of the second run syndrome? Cracking run first time out, went second to Cash Call. We've seen Cash Call, he's come out and run two places since then, a good second and a good third, and um, well, that was in a rating of 36 Cash Call. He ran third in that 36. Senior's guest will be in a 0 0.25 this week, and you'd have to think that if he sort of reproduces that first run behind uh, uh, Cash Call, he probably could just be too good for them in the in the zero 25 it is his third run now uh, he looks like he's top fit and uh, senior's guest uh, most likely this is probably going to be the weakest field that he's taken on and he could probably pull off his first win uh, senior's guest for the Gilbert reset stable on saturday Right, then uh, Blow in the Box, a horse that I've been following and then I forgot about him. I actually gave up on him. Then he, he changed tables last time. They, they tongue-tied him for the first time and seemed to do the trick. Uh, he beat Al Sakra. And I remember Al Sakra came out. He has franked that form. Al Sakra came out and won again. So that was quite a good uh, form line. Uh, he disappointed me for quite a long time, this horse. But I think he's enjoying his new environment at the Jean-Michel Henry stable. He's working well. He's looking well. Uh, even though this is a 41, remember? If you go back a couple of runs, this horse has done very, very well in, in, in this rating of 41, blow in the box. And uh, I, I don't think that the, the, the benchmark 41 is going to be a problem for him, uh, even though he did win in 36. He steps up to 41. But go, have, go have back and have a look at his form. This horse has done well in benchmark 41. Right, then we go back to Ricky Mangold's stable, Spring Man, another horse I followed throughout the year, purely on his South African form. He's got top South African form, this horse, and he's just let me, well, he let me down a couple of times, and uh, I thought he was given a terrific ride by Akash Balu last time when he won. Uh, in my opinion, he's run against a lot stronger what he's been, uh, t well, what he will be taking on, on Saturday, 
And uh, once again, I saw Akash uh, uh, work him, so it'll be remains to be seen whether or not he's going to ride him again. Uh, I hope he does, because like I said, I thought he gave him a terrific ride, and I, I'm pretty confident that this horse can pull off uh, two in a row. Like I said, I've looked at that field. I think he's raced against a lot stronger. He's had that one win now. Obviously, his confidence is going to be up, and uh, Springman working well. Could he possibly win two in a row? I reckon he could. Right, then we go to Kazar from the Patrick Mervyn stable. Three excellent runs in Mauritius now. Uh, let's go through in there. Three and a half lengths off White River in the four-year-old championship. He's run third to Black Cat Back. We've seen what Black Cat Back's done. And then a terrific second to Opera Royal last time. Really flying on at the finish and probably bumping a weaker field this time as well, Kazar. Uh, probably, uh, probably a lot weaker than what he has met in the past. And uh, he's nominated in the fifth race this week. I reckon he's a big, big runner. He's performed well over 1400 meters here and uh, with a strong pace which I reckon there could be he'll be running on well once again and Kazar terrific South African form as well um, I think he's even went I think if I'm not mistaken he started off in the Duchess they thought quite a lot of him in the Duchess uh, he's now taken a couple of runs and uh, he looks like he's ready to run a cracker Kazar so let's keep an eye on him for Saturday then inauguration Jean-Michel Henry's stable, uh, very easy winner last time. We fancied him strongly, and uh, I think he was a gift at 3-1 to one, uh, last time. I don't think we're going to get that 3-1 to one this time. Uh, although there is, uh, I think Carlton Heights is in the race, but uh, inauguration, in my opinion, was a much better, much more f emphatic winner last time. And uh, he's got some solid, solid form. I like the way that he won last time. Uh, he worked very, very well alongside Divine Connection. We saw Divine Connection, terrific first run for, uh, up here. And, uh, well, obviously, the big question mark is who's going to ride inauguration. Obviously, Cedric Sejon no, no longer rides for the stable. Um, so it'll be interesting to see who's going to ride inauguration. I think he's a big, big runner. Uh, in the, in this particular race and uh, I've always liked this horse I like that run to Captain Gone Wild I then heard that he he had a couple of sort of health issues uh, and then I heard he was over it uh, and that obviously proved that last time when he won hands and heels under Cedric Session so I think he could probably possibly pull off another win and then uh, the last race of the day let's talk about uh, all aboard He's yet to win, uh, but Saturday, this can all change. He's, in a, he's not in a strong field. Uh, he finished in the top three, or well, the first three places in his last four starts, and he, he looks like he's ready to, to enter the winner's box. Uh, he has run well over 18.50. Remember, he ran just behind Overdose, uh, very close behind Overdose, in a 18.50, and I think that was a benchmark 31. He now drops down to a 26. Moderate field, in my opinion. I think all aboard is going to be too strong for them on, on Saturday. Nice work, and uh, let's see how he goes uh, on, on Saturday afternoon. Right, well, that's the training. That's uh, Well, in fact, that's everything. That's our whole show. Remember, we will be back here Friday on the mark. Uh, Shahil will be back with me. We're going to go through you that card as best as we can. Let's have a look at the horses that we've spotted in training. Let's see how well they're drawn, where they are, that sort of thing, who they're taking on. And, uh, but I do think that a couple of horses that I've seen in the training uh, yesterday morning should run well this week. So let's keep an eye on them. Thank you very much for joining us. We will see you on Friday morning on The Mark Show with Shahil. And we'll see you then. Goodbye.